All right, all right. We are here back in Franklin, Tennessee at the All In headquarters for the All In podcast. And we got a very special guest today where we're going to be talking to someone who I've known for many years, about two and a half decades. Um, today we've got Mr. John Bell. John is the founder of Bell Law Settlement Services, LLC, one of the leading insurance title insurance companies in Nashville. He's a serial entrepreneur with a focus on corporate leadership and team building. John's also a founding member of the West End Law Group uh, down here in Nashville. He specializes in estate planning and real estate law. John was born here in Nashville, Overton High School, summa cum laude from Trevecca Nazarene, also here, Nashville School of Law. He began practicing real estate planning, estate planning and real estate law just after that, in addition to his legal practice, John's a member, active member of the Tennessee Land Title Association, Tennessee Bar Association, National Mortgage Bankers Association, and several others. When he's not working, he loves golf, attending concerts, professional sporting events, travel. He's also a frequent, a frequent guest at seminars and mastermind groups discussing mindset and the importance of mindset in business and life. So, John, welcome. Hey, good to be here, man. <laughs> I love the name of your podcast, All In, because that's, that's what it takes, isn't it? Um, that is what I'm starting to figure out. Um, you can't really, you can't really be halfway. Um, so, but on those lines, before we get too far and tell, once you tell the viewers and the listeners how we met, uh, and what you, what, what you recall about how we met when that was and all that. Well, at, at the time I was at a mortgage company, a friend of mine had, and we were recruiting. We had, uh, your friend, Dave Calliger. Good Dave, yeah. Good Dave, love him. We need to go see him yeah. sometime. He's playing bass down in uh, down on the down Flor Florabama, Perdido Key. <laughs> we yeah. need to check that out. But anyway, great guy. We had we had a lot of fun. Still there, a great pal. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But uh, you came in. You had no mortgage experience at all. You had financial background experience, and uh, we just started. I think back then we were still like telemarketing or do we have telemarketers or something i'm gonna really date us it was a yellow page ad a yellow we page had the ad. best yellow page ad. that's right and you people <laughs> they was there that company that broker shop had a yellow page ad this was about 1996 i think we had like two full pages or something didn't we? It, well which was just a gold mine at the time this was this was the internet at that time this is talking about 1996 saying, but see that they were on the cutting edge yeah. of what of the technology they had but the other thing that you know i think is kind of relevant is that it was also a subprime mortgage shop mm. so we did if, if folks remember 2008 um when that sort of all was it no that was no it was was it 2008 yeah. that, that stopped mm -hmm. anyway that was the if you could breathe you could get a loan uh, type thing and there was just a, a lot of points on it but it was a learning experience and you know, that's, that was a big part of it. We, we were mortgage bankers. We had our own warehouse line. We were doing our own underwriting uh, and those kind of things. So it, it was a good experience. Well, so how did you segue out of that into, obviously, at some point along the line, you said, I'm going to law school. I want to go into the title of it. So tell me about that journey and that, that, that process. Well, the, the whole journey is I got married. If you want to go back a little bit further in my timeline, I got married when I was 20. We had a a child at 21 uh, and I had not gone to any post high school work. So while I was raising my kids and we were going through that whole phase of young children, which you're f fully familiar with, I was going to school part time and uh, I was working for a construction company. I was on one of their salespeople or whatever and just worked through. I got a first, I got associate's degree from Aquinas. Then I got a, a bachelor's degree from Trevecca. And then after we left uh, Liberty Trust Mortgage, I went to work for Southeast Title and Brent Campbell. And so what he did was he put me through National School of Law because I was already, I basically gone to school my whole life part time at that point. And he just needed somebody to run it. So um, we did that for him. It was very successful, it was, you know, very good markets we were in at the time. And went to law school and graduated there and then eventually started my own title company. And we do other legal services. We got three lawyers mm -hmm. at Bell and we do the state planning. Primarily we do business law, LLCs, those kind of things. Real estate law, obviously, but that's like zoning, that landlord tenant disputes, mm -hmm. boundary disputes. <clears throat> and then because a lot of real estate gets tied up in when somebody dies, we got in the probate. Right. 
area practice, and those only only areas we practice in. But we try to specialize those and and be you know be the best in those. So I started that company, and you know when you start a company, a lot of entrepreneurs would know. You know, you kind of started out, you know, with bootstraps. I mean, you're just trying to, you know, get in our in our case, get the next transaction. Mm-hmm. You know, get with somebody that we could do something with, and we worked that up to about. You know, when it was about doing about a million dollars top line revenue. So at that point, I knew I needed something. I mm-hmm. needed, I didn't have the skills. They certainly don't teach in law school how to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And I really think at this point in my life, since I've basically been an entrepreneur my whole life, is that's what I, I want to be known as more than a lawyer necessarily. But anyway, so my doctor had a friend who was in the, I don't know what Tony Robbins calls it, but the the Golden Club. It was $100,000 a a year Mm -hmm. situation. You got to sit up front, all the perks you get with that. So it was a $10,000 to go to his business mastery for four days in Las Vegas. Well, he got me a deal on it for four grand because she got it through her. She was able to do that. And so I said, man, I don't have four grand really, (laughs) you know, at all to even do this. So I said, all right, let's do it. We got to do it. We got to take this business to another level. And uh, so I thought I was going to learn all about, you know, how to run a business. Well, I get there and I find out you can't, he's not teaching you how to run a business. Mm. He's teaching you how to control yourself, how to, how to be a better person, a better version and all that. And the only way you can run a business is to change yourself. And that put me on the trajectory that I'm continuing on now mm-hmm. with the, the masterminds and the things we do and the different coaches we have and that kind of stuff, trying to hone those skills and really refine that down to, um, to application in business. But also it still goes back to who you are and being yourself. And I want to get into that, but I, I, mean, I think now I'm just thinking about this, but like, let's talk about, you know, because a lot of our listeners, maybe they're first time buyers or not bought a home, or even if they have bought a home, like title insurance, Sure. like what, what is title insurance? Why is it needed? There's different types. There's owner's title insurance. There's lender's title insurance. Mm-hmm. Talk about that because sure. I think people see it on their statement. They're like, what is this? And why right. am I paying for this? And so what is it? And why do you have a title? Like, why do we have title companies? Right. Well, the main reason is a lender will not loan money in, a, in the mortgage space um, on real estate. Uh, commercial or residential, without a, a, a lender's title policy. So what the lender's title policy does is if the real estate closed and there was a mortgage that wasn't paid, that was unpaid on the property, the title insurance uh, for a lender, they're really only, only going to deal with title insurance at, at, a for, at the foreclosure process. Mm-hmm. But at the foreclosure process, they know they got clean title. If there's a problem with the title, the title insurance is going to take care of it. But let me, I'll go back and explain that. But that's the main reason we have it because the, the whole system would break down. With Trying that. to get clear title to right. this property, this thing that you're buying. Yeah, but this is, this is, this is the way for your listeners to think about it. When you buy a house, you want to make sure that you own the house and nobody else owns it and there's no liens on it. A lien could be an old mortgage. Let's say the person you bought the house from had a first mortgage and a second mortgage. When you bought the house, the title company, really what it does is facilitate the closing. And that's really, you hear a lot about title and escrow. The escrow part is the title company gets all the money and they get your down payment, your earnest money. They get the uh, wire from the lender. The wire from the lender. They get all these in and then they have all these expenses to go out. It could be appraisal, the lender's fees, um, taxes, uh, and paying off the mortgages. So all once all that's done, then and so we have you know lots of E and O and and all those kind of things to protect. We have a you know really we end up with a really large escrow account that has a lot of money in it. But let's say you're buying a house. The, the guy before you had a first mortgage and a second mortgage, and the title company only paid the first mortgage off. Well, you're sitting there at the house. The second mortgage company has their mortgage or lien recorded in the Register of Deeds office, and they come to you and say, "Hey, you owe us this money." And you go, well, "I don't owe you the money. I know, but this land owes us the money." The person that we lent the money to on the second mortgage pledged this land as collateral for this loan, so we're taking our collateral. So now it's a problem. We're now it's a problem. problem. They're going to take your. They're going to take your house. There's a bit. I got a big problem now. Uh, um, big national 
TV mortgage company, refinanced a lady. She had a judgment lien on her. They refinanced her, didn't pay the judgment lien. Now the judgment lien's coming to, and I've got a, uh, I'm in a, uh, a motion hearing on the 20th. They're asking the court to let them sell the property at the sheriff's sale. So it's a huge problem. Right. So, um, so how do we know if there's any liens on it? Well, we look in the register of deeds office in the county where the where the land lays, and if the lien's not recorded there, it's not it's not a lien. It's not perfected. It's not against the land. So we look there and make sure that that's clean. Once that's clean, then we can issue the title insurance policy to the lender. And if you're going to buy the house, you might as well get the title policy for yourself. For example, the, the example I just said where they refinanced it didn't pay off a, a, a judgment lien. Um, when, when they did that, then they're, you know, they're, they're in jeopardy of losing their house. So the title company and title insurance makes all that go smoothly. We're the place where you go and sign all the paperwork mm -hmm. and get the keys. And we have, uh, a lot of things we do. And we've really tried to make that experience, the closing experience, something fun and enjoyable. We have you know, closing gifts we give, we do photographs. We, there's a lot of things we do to, to make it special. Because for you as a mortgage lender, it may not be that special. It's just another closing. You've got several a month. But for the person buying the house or selling the house, it's a big deal. Big deal. They're only going to be there a few times. But to go back to the um, difference between lender's policy. You have two policies. A lender's right. policy shows up on the settlement statement, which is now – um, closing disclosure. Closing disclosure. Used to be called settlement statement. Yeah, absolutely. Settlement we statement. we now, still use settlement statements. Yeah, for non-QM loans and things like that. Yeah. So, but to, to explain like the difference between an owner's policy and a lender's policy and why why it's smart to have both. Right. Well. And in other words, if somebody pays cash for a house. Excellent. Okay. They pay cash for a house. Then there's no lender's policy. Correct. Because there's no lender involved. But, I mean, even going back to like the Wild Wild West, hey, uh, I want to buy your home. Uh, I need to somehow figure out if you, you know, if there's any liens on this, make sure that we ha I have clear title so I don't have a problem, you mm -hmm. know, somewhere down the road. So my gallops into town and says, Hey, um, I have a, I have a, have an interest in this property. It was deeded to me years ago. Right. Well, what happened, the more common thing is this, let's say that somebody died that owned the property yep. earlier, which we call early earlier in and the chain heir. of title. Yeah, and an heir got cut out. He discovers it. Well, he or she, you know, can can come back and, you know. Years well, later. Years later, absolutely. There was, a, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, horror stories. But the one that I think is interesting that when you say, I don't want to, uh, you know, what is owners in title insurance? This, this there was a family in Washington, D.C., and they had properties, and they were a prominent Chinese family so they had homes in china and here and had several properties uh, in the u.s well the son so when the family's gone it's not it wasn't unusual because they were just in china so one of the sons murdered his mother his father and his brother you know disposed of their bodies or whatever told everybody they were in china took his brother's driver's license and went and sold all their property the driver's license point is he impersonated his brother as the owner of the property mm -hmm. and sold him. Well, he eventually got caught. So they came back to this person that did pay cash for the house and said, hey, you don't own this house. The person that conveyed the deed to you was an imposter. You, you don't own it. Well, they're completely out. Now, that's that's an extreme story. but I say the least. <laughs> yeah, I know, but what but I'm no, saying is it, if you're buying a, part. a $500 or a million dollar house sure. and you got to pay $3,000 for title insurance, well, I don't want that expense, but do you really want to put a million dollars for $3,000 up to where you don't have the clear title? Right. And the other thing, if the people with the money, you, the lenders, won't lend without title insurance for right. them, don't you think they're smarter maybe than you are in right. this area? And so you need to get the owner's title policy. So what, what happened in that case and what did happen in that case, the title insurance company paid the estate the full, you know, for that, you know, whatever they paid for the house and they were protected and they were fine. If they had had title insurance, they would have had a, a lot, bunch of legal problems and probably would have lost their house. And um, I think of it, uh, I think back to when it finally crystallized for me, like so many years ago, years and years, but like, it, I thought about it in terms of, because my dad was in the automobile industry. And so I remember this scenario where, um, 
the car that was being bought, the 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 owner had tried to scratch off the lien holder's name off the title. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, well, why? I don't understand. Well, because they're not trying to sell it and not have to pay the lien holder off. Yeah. And so if you were to buy that, the lien holder is going to want, you know, let's say it was Toyota Motor Credit or whatever, mm-hmm. Ford Motor Credit, GM, whatever. They're going to find that. They're going to figure that out. And so in this case, what happens is all these these liens are actually registered down to register of deeds office. Yeah, let's talk about that. The way you perfect a lien, that's just a legal term, to make it enforceable on a on an automobile R V or a mobile home is you write it, it's on it's printed on the title. Mm-hmm. And to get it released, the 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 lien holder has to turn turn the title hold turn the title over and release the lien. Um, so by scratching out and what was going to happen in that scenario, the GMAC is going to come repossess the car because it's there it's, they, right. they've got a lien on the car same thing with with uh houses except houses liens are perfected by recording them in the register of deeds office in the county where the property lays yeah all right so let's let's move on from that so obviously man you're you've got a lot of things going on i mean um you're out there in the community mm-hmm. we see you um we see you out there at events at real estate events on the radio you had a radio program for a long time um and so, but tell us what inspires you to get out and, and, you know, in the, in the real estate world. Cause that's really kind of where I feel like we see you the most, even though we'll talk about some other things you do, but like in the real estate community now locally, mm-hmm. um, tell us about how you're kind of moving in and in and through that. Well, it, it's at the end of the day, it's to create, uh, to expand our network, to create more people. So we have more mm-hmm. business so we can grow and, and, you know, pay our employees and, and, you know, get some other offices. You know, we've got mm-hmm. recently got our license in Florida. So you and I are going down next week to <clears throat> talk to some realtors down there. And mm-hmm. you've got your license in Florida. Um, so we really, you know, we want, we believe in growth. We believe in growing. We believe if you're not growing, you're dying. You know, so mm-hmm. there's that. So I think the initially getting out there was about, um, you know, marketing and, and just, you know, traditional marketing. But as we've evolved through some of the, the programs we're doing and the coaches and the things we're doing uh it was really about getting a personal brand Mm. and so that's you know the focus now is on personal branding with you know doing podcasts like we're doing here the events we have and building that brand uh you know gary v brian covey it's it's uh and you know what you're doing i mean i really admire everything you're doing the the instagram uh, things you have and and I think that's what it's about because at the end of the day, what, no matter what we're doing, you know, we do some real estate investing, we do other things, but it's about your network and who you know. It's about people yeah. and finding your kind of people. You know, some mm-hmm. people are, you know, you just don't click with. Right. But, but, and, and the other thing is, and, and really for us, that's, we talk about ideal clients a lot. We're looking for an ideal client that doesn't waste our time. We get along with, and we share the same values. That's the main thing. And it's, our values are abundance mentality. There's enough for everybody uh, and and go forward, you know, honesty and, and, and um, unselfishness. So it's about personal branding expanding your network with like-minded people and so when you say client um tell us tell the you know the listener sure. what, what you know are you talking about the person buying the home are you talking about the realtor are you talking about the builder or wh- who are we right. talking about here for a title company there's only three groups of people that can refer business to you generally you know you guys do retail marketing because you know people can pick up the phone call the cmg and, and get a mortgage loan or you know realtors do builders do to, they're getting the buyer or the seller uh additionally with mortgage companies uh the other type of transactions we close besides purchases is refinances so um but generally the general public doesn't say i want to use xyz title company you'll notice there's no title companies i've been looking for excuse me um that advertise direct to consumer there's no dtc in the title business why is that because people when they go to buying a house is a daunting deal they're going to their realtor they're looking at houses they're going to the mortgage person they're you know all the paperwork they have to get together and all that 
the last thing they want to do is try to, you know, pick the title company. Now, having said that, I think it might can be done, but you maybe alienate your referral partners. No. So, but let's talk about that, which was the, your question. Generally speaking, with that with that caveat, um, title companies have three groups of people that can refer business to them: realtors because they um, have the um, relationship with the client, they can direct it to the client. The mortgage banker, their lender can say, hey, we, we prefer using this title company. They they do a good job. They take care of the money. You're not going to have liens on your property. Uh, or a builder who's selling houses. Yeah. Um, so those are the three folks. When I talk about clients, when we put on events, they're for builders, realtors, or banks. All right. So you did mention something about refinancers. I brought up another question. So uh, the, one of the number one questions we get um, is when the client that's doing a refinance, which refinances were way down last year, but almost inv invariably they have a question about why am I paying title insurance again? I already bought the home. I already paid this once. So explain that. Cause I think people want to know that there's definitely people out there that still like, and that's just a common, like, I don't know that that's a very common knowledge thing. No, that's a great question. And I really think folks asking that question, I think what happened when title insurance, you know, this concept was invented, people weren't refinancing every year like they, you know, they do when rates mm. go down and all that. I mean, so, you know, there really wasn't a plan for that. How, having said that, though, when you, if you bought your house and you bought owner's title insurance policy when you refinance you get a reissue credit so yeah, but what does that mean and it, it means you save about 25 percent but why do they even title, need it though? yeah your title insurance is 25 percent less why they need it is if you bought your house and you finance with wells fargo wells fargo has the loan policy boo <laughs> wells fargo has the loan policy and if, if they have to foreclose on you, they've got all that protection. When, when they take the property back, they're the property owner. But now it's CMG. And, and you know, if, if, for, if CMG has to foreclose, then it's not going um, – Wells Fargo's policy is not going to cover So the lender's it. policy follows the lender. If right. the, the lender A goes away, lender B comes in. Now you have to replace the lender's policy. But what about – the well, owner's the, policy just follows them, the, right? Yeah, the, th yeah the, but the thing about it is the owner's policy you bought and paid for. The thing about title insurance, it's expensive. It's a $3,000 premium. That's high for insurance. But what you don't well, realize— for, But it spends on the side. Not, yeah. It's not $3,000 for a $300,000 house. Right, right. But that's three thousand would for, be for how for, much? five hundred thousand dollars, okay. and that's really not that much, probably for that. But anyway, uh, five hundred to a million. You're look, um, you're looking in that at, in those kind of ranges. Um, title insurance. If you live there thirty years. You're insured for 30 years. You never have to pay the premium again. On your owner's policy. On your owner's policy. Um, so that's covering you. If somebody comes back and they have a claim on it, on your property, you're still insured by that. But you've got to uh, get the new lender insured. But when they, when they go to buy a home, you're not paying for a giant lender's policy and a giant owner's policy. Explain wh what this concept of simultaneous issue means well the 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 owner's policy is for the amount you pay for the house the lender's policy is for the amount that they lent you mm -hmm. so it's the loan amount so but they're not paying on a five hundred thousand dollar house not there so yeah. like you're not paying three thousand and three thousand you'll see oh yeah yeah, yeah. there's the reissue credit or sorry not the reissue credit simultaneous the, the simultaneous issue would be a fraction like what fifty bucks, yeah. eighty bucks, something like that. Fifty bucks, yeah. And so, bec and why is that? Okay, that is because whether the title insurance company is issuing a lender's policy or an owner's policy, they've got they've got the same coverage. Okay, so one policy covers both parties. the The unfortunate thing is when you don't get a loan policy, the owner's policy is the same price as with the same simultaneous issue. So you're getting a two for one. You may yeah. as well take the, the owner's right. policy it's, it's, if, it, because you have if you, to you pay have to for get the loan. Yeah. If you have to get the loan policy, you may as well pay the extra fifty dollars to get your own mm -hmm. policy. Yeah. That's a, that's a these no are the details that people just right. It's it's but the devil's in the details a lot of times and mm -hmm. um and explain like title insurance. Like, do you have control over that premium? Like, explain no. how that works. So, like, well, you're a representative it, of yeah. maybe these various title companies. You're free to say whom they are, yeah, but they're we're, big, big, you know, that, yeah, that provide the insurance. <clears throat> what title companies are are title insurance agents, just like a homeowner's insurance agent. Or, I mean, really, we're title insurance agents. And um, 
the title insurance we sell, we get a commission on it, just like if you're selling homeowners insurance. Uh, and uh, so the uh, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so when you buy a title policy, uh, we talk about simultaneous issue. simultaneous issue. Then you buy a policy. Uh, you, you close. You 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 guys are actually selling title insurance. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so right. so the title. Yeah. I, I, so the, I remember that. So yeah. when you get the, so when you get a title policy, it doesn't say Bell Law. It's got like yeah. Chicago title or right. We're a title insurance agent, and we're agents for the big four, which is First American Title Insurance, Old Republic, Stewart, and Fidelity, which is is, is uh, Chicago. Chicago okay. Yeah. So we're talking. So yeah, your policy comes from Fortune 100 companies, multinational companies. Okay. Um, so the the financial backing on the insurance is, is, is solid there. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and on the price in Tennessee, different states are different, but in Tennessee, it's a promulgated rate, and you have to charge what the state. Yes, yeah, so it's not like I guess the point I want to make. You can't shop title insurance, right? That's the point I want to make. Is that like you have these four, the big four? They basically set the, they set these premiums, and then and whomever the state agrees with the state premium. agrees with it, and then the title insurance company, like you, where they're closing with 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 Bell Law or they're closing with X Y Z Title. You can uh, use one of my competitors' names. If I do that. To you. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. So, but if they either way, that premium is the premium. Where where the where would you say that though? is the difference there where, the, 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 where, where the, you sh- where you are differentiating yourself from XYZ title right well part of the differentiation is there besides the title insurance there's a closing fee and, and that so closing fees could vary a little bit although just because they're basically around the they're same. basically the same because you what are we talking about here on closing fees for 500, 500 bucks in Tennessee um, so you know and and we in Tennessee which is unlike anywhere in this country that we know of. The buyer has a title company and the seller has a title company, and we do split closing. Split closing. So we we know what all our competition is charging. So you know you can't, and the realtor's going to tell you too. Right. <laughs> you know. So somebody's coming in over the top with a six hundred dollar uh, closing fee that's going to be out of the market. Mm-hmm. But the differentiation is, and that's what we focus on, and is. is uh, how you use technology, how you use communication, uh, how you treat your folks. A couple examples. We have an earnest app. So if instead of writing a check for your earnest money, giving it to your realtor, your realtor, you know, flying to our office because the contract said the earnest money had to be in within five days to bring us the check, you can just go on the earnest app and it basically Venmos us your, your uh, earnest right. money. We have uh, net sheet calculators where a realtor can be in your home. If you're selling a house, you say, I'm selling for a million, I owe 800,000. Um, uh, I've got to pay the, I got to take my commission out of it. I got to take my second mortgage out of it. I'm, I'm buying a, 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 a home warranty for the buyer and it'll tell you exactly what you're going to walk away with. Right. Um, so leveraging technology, we have, uh, uh, you know, a pizza tracker type system where you can go in and for the realtor, the mortgage company, the builder, or the client can go in and see and track their uh, progress, their, their progress transaction. And what that progress is, we get the contract in, we title search to see if there's any liens. Then we issue the title insurance commitment mm-hmm. to issue a policy when you buy the house right. and then the closing. So uh, communication. And letting realtors know and letting letting buyers and sellers know what's going on and having that comment. So there's a lot of title companies where you just kind of, you know, the order goes in, hell, you don't know if they even received it or not, you know, much right. less if they're working on it. And then they come back the last minute and it's got a, you know, an, a state tax lien or a federal tax lien. Right. And, you know, and it just blows the whole thing up at the end. So. D- delivering this, it's it's somewhat title insurance is somewhat commoditized, which like mortgages are too, really, if you think about it. But you, it's the the difference is in the service, and everybody says we give great service, but we have actual items. If if you're a realtor, we have closing gifts there. If you forgot a closing gift or you didn't, you know, anything yeah, yeah, we can yeah. do to so, solve problems. Yeah, so closing gifts, all that's great. Here's what I want, though. I think people, I think it's good for people to understand is that. So when someone's buying a home, they don't really understand. Sometimes they, you know, they're new to this. So they think that they're show- – sometimes they'll ask because they don't know, hey, do we come to your office, Mark, 
they, do we come to the lender's office for the closing? Because they're not really sure what this title company is even doing. Um, so initially, uh, you know, 20, 30 days ago, they've received a title request order for a title search. Uh, and so you guys execute that. But then what happens is, is that the lender uh, underwrites the loan. And then that once it's approved, it moves to the lender's closing department. And that closing department, those closers are working on sending the, the loan documents to the, the title company that is closing the loan. And so that, that, that receiving end of the title, the back end of the title company is absolutely crucial. If you've got a crap back end uh, title company because Sally's got a bad day or she's just bitchy uh, <laughs> or John is just, you know, not having a good day and uh, he's checked out or whatever, not John, this John, but Joe or whatever, then all of a sudden now, you know, the, the, the lender, it could look bad uh, yeah, or vice the, versa, you, you, you could, the, but you could have the title company that's really on top of things. That's yeah. really being proactive. Hey, we need your final figure so we can, comp we can execute and comp prepare the, uh, the final closing disclosure. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is the closing disclosure is, is a team is, is a joint 100%. thing. You've got the lender, who's issuing the, the closing instructions. So they're basically plugging in basic figures into, and then the title company has to come in and finish filling it out. And then, and then say, hey, it's all complete. We'll send it back to the lender, the closing department for the lender to approve. And then once it's a, after this volleying, literally almost like a tennis ball back and forth, literally. what happens is, is that now we've settled on the final settlement statement or sorry, final closing disclosure. And now that's given to the borrower and the realtor so they can see and look at their numbers before they show up at closing. Uh, and typically that's happening, what, three days before closing and so forth. So right, that they that's understand. the law, yeah, the right. three days before. So, so that if you can see how things can go off the rails, if you have poor at, um, back end, poor ops on either side. But yeah. I mean, it shows because these two have to work in tandem in order to land this plane. Well, the, the, thing, the other thing that we didn't talk about is – the title company gets the homeowners association transfer, how much your homeowners association is going to be. They get the payoff from the seller. They verify all liens. They verify the commission based on the contract, how, you know, how much it is, whether yeah. you got a discounted commission. They may, if, if a, if a warranty is on the contract, they make sure the warranty gets on the uh, closing disclosure. Yeah. They make sure that it's for the right amount. They make sure they've got an invoice where to pay it. So there's, there's, you know, we make sure the appraiser gets paid. If he, if he didn't get paid, we'll make sure, you know, the contract to close person for the realtor gets paid. So there's could be 20 different. We could write 20 checks. On you guys one. are cutting checks for the realtors. Like yeah. that's where they get their check. We get from. all the money in and for all the, the money goes agent, out. The buyer's agent. And, the, and we end up with zero at the end. Right. We don't end up with zero. You cut the check the to end, the seller. We're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. We wire it these days. Wire, yeah. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's because, for example, have you not been gotten to a closing and oh, we ain't got the payoff yet? Well, you can't close without the payoff. It's a showstopper. Yeah. Yeah. And there's guys, <laughs> there are a million showstoppers when it comes to, I mean, everyone who's ever heard of their friend or maybe you've had a closing that went awry or it was delayed, somewhere along the line, communication broke down. And that communication is very like the lender can 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 hit an absolute home run, but they have to have they have to have the title company in in play to really perform that last part. And if the title company messes up, then it makes everyone look bad. Every now everyone's ticked and because maybe they forgot to get the payoff, maybe they forgot to get the HOA. So it's really you have to be on your you have to be in your game on the back end and detail. So these people that are in your ops, they've got to be detail oriented mm -hmm. in their job. Well we do disc profiles, which is a personality test for all our folks, because really somebody doing those details on the closing disclosure mm -hmm. settlement statement, you've got to have a personality to sit there and just do that all day, like an accountant or whatever. So those are high S's and C's and C's are the folks that, you know, just the rule followers that, you know, the O C D um, you know, they're not, you know, they're just particular yeah. and, and detail and their personality is suited to, to stay in that. So, yeah. and the, but we also hire for personality and because 
which is customer service. And our customers are usually realtors and builders and bankers. But, you know, you, you don't want Betty Bitchy answering the phone. You want uh, Sally Energy answering right. the phone, you know, and that's we hired of that. And that's and that's taken time. And we've really got a great team right now. But we've had you we've had to really we've had to move some folks around. Um, and by that, I mean, fire people, you right. know, that, that, that didn't share our values, have that energy, have the positive mentality, because when all these things are happening, lean came up, payoff came up, it, like it's stressful for sure. them. So they have to, they have to be able to do the stress, still be nice during it, not throw you under the bus. And you gotta be able to deliver that news. Yeah. They have and, to, you guys are delivering, your team is delivering news. Sometimes, you know, bad news like, yeah. Hey, um, sorry, but this flight has been delayed right you know, yeah. no one knows to hear that right yeah no. sorry Canceled. southwest yeah <laughs> i'm a big fan but yeah. holy smokes yeah, you yeah, together. The next week. um but that's that's the it, there's so many factors to really make a title company that can be uh differentiated from you know from your competition all right so title business uh but now you're in investing so um you know, tell me about that. I know your passion. You're you're a Nashville native like me, um, but talk about kind of what you have going on. But also just and how just your mindset is is now with what what you have going on outside of title business. You know, what moving forward. Well, you and I, you know, a lot of the masterminds we're in and stuff. Folks are uh, <clears throat> wholesalers, which means they're uh, finding land to build on and. And we've done so many transactions for so many of our investors, and it's been a, it's been a great market to invest in by far. Not just residential, by the way. So yeah. you're dealing with these commercials, so like you know, developers mm. like Tyler Cobble or yeah. you know, Mike, Michael Gomez, um, you know, things yeah, like this. Key Samaru, Key Samaru yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah, a, a lot of a lot of our work is is commercial, and that can, and we do a lot for we do a lot of hotels. We have some uh, some clients and, and their families that specialize in those. So we we do do all that, but um, it, whether it's commercial or residential, and you know we're looking at we're looking at kind of starting small. The, the, basically, what I've discovered in the real estate investment side, which is a a passion. It's also a uh, stream of revenue during down markets like we're currently in. Um, so we're looking for things that you know are within our scope of, of capital raising, which would be a, a two build. Uh, you know where you tear down and build two yeah. tall and skinnies. We've looked at building some five to eight unit <clears throat> short term rental non owner occupied Airbnb type products um, and. To go further, another thing that we're exploring, and I think, you know, with you really, is capital raising. <clears throat> and that is, you know, bringing investors into larger projects to to, to make your... Uh, That's huge right yeah. now. I mean, I think you have just so many people, especially in this area. I mean, your peers who have a 401k, great, you have a 401k, but then they just kind of set it and forget it. They have no idea what's going on. And then they realize that I'm not sure it's... You know, there's a saying, and it's true, but you can't save your way to wealth. It just doesn't happen. I mean, I mean you, you can, you know, if you, but it's not very, be, very, it's very, very slow. It's very rare. But most people use some sort of investment vehicle to jump two or three rungs up, and a lot of times that's real estate. And so when they don't know because they have a day job, they don't know how to um, investigate, look at a deal, uh, vet a deal. Is this a good deal? They don't know how to look at the numbers. Yeah. And so what happens is you, you do what's called like a syndication, you know, where you partnership, you have, you raise funds and then, you know, the general partner is the one who's going to be the lead and he's going to, who, who's going to lead everything. He's going to execute, do all the things, do all the hiring. Um, and so that's important, I think, right? Because you have now all of a sudden with syndications, which all that is is like a group of pooled together of money. Mm -hmm. um, and then those people are now able to invest in a property, you know, a giant building, um, a multifamily unit, mm -hmm. and be a passive investor and get a nice rate of return, uh, tax advantages, things like this. And now all of a sudden when that property goes up in value, um, they're able to the, – the, the general partners are able to refinance it, give their – give their uh, money back, give the original investor their original investment back, but still that investor can still maintain their equity position. Yeah. And so all of that 
is just a it's a beautiful thing. Well, the great right? thing about real estate is is that is the leverage. So <clears throat> generally, there's two places to invest: Wall Street or in real estate. Right. And of course, you can invest in Wall in real estate Wall St- in Wall Street too. But stocks and bonds or real estate. If I to buy to buy a million dollars worth of GM stock, I got to pay a million dollars. To buy a million dollars worth of commercial real estate or whatever, I got to pay two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Let's say I don't have two hundred thousand dollars. In certain but, states, even fifty, because the loan limit is high enough. You know, maybe yeah. you have to put fifty thousand down. Right, but um, so and and the leverage is relatively safe from a risk standpoint because it's it's pool the, risk the, spread out right plus but the real estate though you know if, if everything goes south you're only going to be at your 200 if the real estate right. you know can can be sold to get out of the deal right so from a risk standpoint it's real it's relatively less risky because you can buy stocks and bonds on leverage too but if a million dollars of stock yeah, goes down i'm not it's, saying we're not saying no don't buy them. stocks i'm no, just saying no, no. but like it's important to understand that it's a it's a lower barrier of entry to a high uh, value asset. Mm-hmm. So in other words, I mean, a million dollars of stock does go down. I mean, it's kind of the you know the negative side of it. I mean, you, if it goes down to two hundred, you if you sold it, you well, don't have to sell it, but you, you've lost eight hundred dollars or eight hundred thousand dollars if you sell it. But you can hold it. Hope well, the company has to go out of business to actually lose completely. Sure. Know? But so they're, they're, uh, uh, but we know awesome. real estate what? It's yeah. done what over the last 100 years? Yeah, it, it's it's always I – mean, they're just not making land anymore, and that's a, you know, that's a real thing. But what happens is, especially in Nashville and other, other cities for sure, you take Brooklyn, you know. I mean, the gentrification of, mm. of, you know, people are going back in, and that's what we're doing. A lot of the properties we're looking at are um, – in areas of town, Dickerson Road, North Nashville, that, you know, when we were growing up, you know, you weren't really, there wasn't a whole lot of investment going on there. But yeah. through gentrification, you know, love it or hate it, you yeah. know, it, it's it's happening. So, but the other thing, going back to the real estate investment, let's say you can build a, a two tall and skinny homes for a million dollars, okay? I don't have I don't have two hundred thousand to put down to get the construction loan and buy the land, but you got a hundred thousand. I got a hundred thousand. We build it for a million. We sell them for a million four. Well, I, I get my hundred back plus the two hundred. Yeah. You get your hundred back plus the two hundred. It's a twelve to eighteen month deal, and that's a microcosm of. And then you just as big as you want to go. If you want to go. Uh, you know what they're doing in, in the in the gulch or different areas. You know the the real the number keeps going up, but you still have all those relative profit margins and uh, leverage. Right, right. So, what's coming up for you? That you're excited about? Well, right now I'm excited about getting into Florida with the title company. I'm excited about going down there with you next week. Uh, we're going to 30A, and we've got a a realtor mastermind. We're gonna we're gonna uh, visit some folks and and just go around because uh morell and i were talking earlier about it just doesn't seem like you know all the events and everything really all the title companies do you think about it they're just not doing that in florida it's just kind of like you know okay. come over here if, if you want to right. you know? i mean so you have I, to I think, market I think as we a can title bring company, that energy right? yeah i mean and you're marketing you're doing it you're out there doing it you're marketing so um tell people how you know how they can reach you at bell title uh and and, and Bell Law, sorry, Bell Law and Bell Law um, Settlement Service. Bell Law Settlement Service, and, and tell people how they can reach out to you. So if, if they're out there, they're an investor, um, you know, when they're or they're a, a realtor, and they're they're trying to maybe look for a new place, a new home that provides mm-hmm. elite service, elite well, back end. How so, how can they uh, how can they contact you? For investors, especially the fact that we have business law, we can do the LLCs, we can put the JVs together. You know, so if you and I went in on a deal like I just described, and put a hundred thousand each to borrow a million to sell for a million four then um, you're going to have to have a, a, something in writing, you know, yep. what the deal, how you're going to share the profit and losses. You may want to put an LLC to get the uh, uh, asset protection that a uh, limited liability company does. Um, so we really have a market for investors and for builders, too. When we do builders' closings, we 
Uh, we give out the keys, we give out the warranty, we do the punch list. So there's a lot of specialty niches we have in there. But uh, also, if everybody needs a will or a trust, and I think everybody thinks that and says that, but they never go get it, you know. Mm-hmm. So if you need a will or a trust, we really recommend that. And, uh, from so how do they reach planning, out to you? They reach out to us at bellsettlement.com. Bellsettlement.com. B-E-L-L-S-E-T-T-L-E-M-E-N-T.com. And you can get my information and reach me or my whole team. Sweet. Sweet. Well, thanks, man, for coming, bro. This has been great. It, I'm glad we finally uh, got you on. And uh-huh. um, guys, reach out to John. Uh, thanks for listening today, and we'll see you next time.